I made a video talking about five normal Space Marine Legions, so it's time to talk about five Chaos Space Marine Legions. Although the Space Marines were created to protect mankind, not all of them do. For one reason or another, multiple legions turned away from the light of the Emperor to give in to the dark temptations of chaos. In the 10,000 years since the Horse Heresy, the corruption of the traitor legions has grown even larger, causing them to become monstrous. And I wanted to go over the most notable versions of these monsters, including the most impactful legion and the ones who worship one chaos god exclusively. But before anything else, make sure to go ahead and worship that subscribe button for a gift from Nurgle's cutest plague beast. And only the bad boy legions this time. If you want the good boys, go look at my video for the loyalist legions. This will be a quick rundown for these legions. If you have any corrections or something I might have misinterpreted or missed, including your favorite Chaos Legion, make sure to tell me how much of an idiot I am for leaving them out in the comments. Let's start off with the ever-chaotic Black Legion. The Black Legion, previously named the Luna Wolves and the Sons of Horus, are the antithesis to the Ultramarines. They are generous on the battlefield and have no main patron god and instead undividedly worship Chaos. Their Primarch, Loris Hupercal, was quickly found by the Emperor and raised by him personally. This worked well enough for Horus until he got stabbed with the kind brash Anathena, which showcased him a horrible future where his brothers are dead and the Emperor of Mankind was being worshipped as a god. That weird hallucination, drug trip, and prophecy was enough for him to turn traitor. With him mounting a heretical rebellion, which killed some of his brothers and mortally wounding the Emperor, before his soul was completely erased from the Immaterium and the universe as a whole by his father killing him harder than anyone has died ever. His power claw was picked up by the current Chaos Lord of the newly named Black Legion, Abaddon the Despoiler. One of the best miniatures on tabletop and a miniature Horus himself, Abaddon was Horus' right hand man ever since they met literally taking his right hand after he died and adopting a very similar look compared to the late Warmaster. Abaddon has stayed mostly human for 10 millennium, but has been in demon mode ever since the Horus Heresy. He formed multiple Black Crusades against the Imperium, with the most notable crusade being the one that broke Cadia and opened the Eye of Terror into a galaxy-spanning grin. Abaddon is still around the galaxy, evil maxing intrusive thoughts to this day. The Black Legion themselves have no focus on worshipping one Chaos God and instead are devoted to causing chaos around the galaxy and finally killing the Corpse Emperor. Much like the rivals of the Ultramarines, the Black Legion are good at a little bit of everything, being able to use the entirety of weapons the Chaos Gods gave them. With Abaddon even outpacing Rebute Gilliman himself on tabletop, while being able to deal much more damage in melee. Now from the Black Legion to the Red Angry World Eaters. The World Eaters have been the angriest mother lovers around. They originally had a white and blue color scheme, but eventually went towards their iconic red bloody color scheme with gold on the sides, imitating the red of their poppy Angron. I'm gonna be honest with you, Angron had a messed up upbringing. Forced to fight and kill an arena as a slave his whole life, while the rich and wealthy profited off his suffering, he had nails hammered into his brain that would slowly kill him, but make it so adrenaline would pump through his veins constantly and keep him angry. With a few of his friends, he staged a revolt that was bound to fail until the Emperor of Mankind showed up and only saved Angron and let everybody else die anyways? Great introduction to your son, Ems. Because of the large amount of trauma and anger, when Horus eventually started a rebellion, Angron was ready to cut his way through his brothers, chopping his enemies in half, and be one of the most brutal combatants on the battlefield. Quickly dispatching target after target and collecting their skulls, Angron would fight Sanguinius in the Siege of Terra and the First War of Armageddon, with him losing both, but coming back in the lore in the 10th edition of 40k. Although not their first pick, Angron became a demon prince of Korn. Korn is the chaos god of war, rage, bloodlust, and honor. Korn lives for the thrill of a fight and cares not where the blood froze from, his adversaries or his friends. He beefs up his boys with 
power and gives them an incurable, infinite bloodlust. And he is hated by Selenesh for not playing with his food. The active chaos lord of the World Eaters is Korn's actual champion, the one-man blood vortex Karn the Betrayer. Karn hated Angron ever since he first met him, but always loved spilling blood. Karn has a heads-up display in his helmet that showcases a kill counter that updates in real time, to the point where it'll accidentally kill people and it will get updated when it happens. Ever since the heresy has been on a rampage killing his friends and enemies alike. The world eaters eat up everyone in a small radius around them on tabletop, being focused on melee more than anything. Guns are stupid, but chainsaws and chain axes keep the blood flowing. They also don't have any psychic units, and making it so corn berserkers are their key unit, with larger units like terminators being able to absorb more damage. Enough about the bloody and brutal world eaters, though. Let's go to the insanely intellectual Thousand Sun. The Thousand Sons weren't always a thousand strong. They are incredibly strong psychics and use magics and spells to fight their enemies. A bit of an oopsie occurred by following the orders of the negative acting party of Horus. The executioner of the Emperor, Lehman Russ of the Space Wolves, called the Thousand Sons, forcing them into the arms of Zeech with their pride mark, Magnus the Red. Magnus understood that he was the son of the Emperor of Mankind from the beginning and had intense psychic powers just as the Emperor planned. He also crash landed on Prospero, a planet that the Emperor found out worshipped him as a god and he... Oh no, that's no good. Magnus was well taught and a scholar on their world, to the point where he was elected planetary governor, all operating under his big brain rule. The Emperor found Magnus rather quickly due to his giant psychic field he put off just by existing. And after a mess up, he accidentally broke a psychic firewall unknowingly sending demons to fight the Emperor. Magnus was reprimanded by having his legions slaughtered and being labeled a traitor. In the current day, Magnus is one bitter, vengeful bastard, trying to pull off schemes to kill the rest of humanity and avenge the Thousand Sons. Unfortunately for him, every time he does it, he kinda gets karate chopped in the throat by Space Marines or his brother Rabute Gilliman. Another grand schemer is their current Chaos Lord, Armin. <laughs> yeah, just, just Armin. Armin has been doing all sorts of shenanigans since the Horus Heresy. He turned all the Thousand Suns into dust in their armor, making it so they can never bleed out but instead leak. He also learned the names of greater demons in order to make them work underneath him, while also burning down libraries in his meantime, while in current day forming chaos cults to mess with humanity. The Thousand Suns use their psychic ability and spells to their advantage. They throw random BS at their enemies till they explode, but if anyone gets on top of them, they can't scramble like an egg and then get folded like omelets if someone gets close enough. The chaos god they follow is Zeench. Zeench is the chaos god of change, sorcery, and magic. He uses the ennoble horrors and knowledge of the universe to obtain power and to control the past, present, and future alike. He makes schemes and is hated by Nurgle for not being able to flow with the cycle of life. Alright, enough about these geeks too. How about the guys that find pleasure in everything? The Emperor's Children. The Emperor's Children play League of Legends for fun. Before the Horus Heresy, they had a purple and gold color scheme, but then once they fell to chaos, they went full pink. It wasn't a big shock that they fell to chaos. They're all kind of egomaniacs and full of themselves. Just like the Emperor's Children Primark, though it is one handsome, ripe, seductive bastard named Fulgrim. Fulgrim, despite his towering, handsome physique, had a very humble upbringing, with him being a child worker and later a foreman on a mining planet. For the most part, he comfortably played the role of a leader, until the Emperor showed up and his ego became enormous because his father looked like a god and gave him an entire Space Marine Legion. Fulgrim later accidentally got a Chaos Blade and then beheaded his best friend and became a snake demon with no official 40k artwork. There is someone who would I'd consider a bigger bastard than Fulgrim, and his name is Lucius the Eternal. If the Emperor's children play League of Legends for fun, Lucius is the guy who made the Reddit post about Seabat. This is the main guy I would not want to meet ever. He has a giant tongue and tentacle arm and would just ruin your entire existence. He was once a normal dude but gave in to debauchery and now skins people alive then puts their souls into his armor with their faces screaming for eternity. Plus, Lucius has this thing where he can't exactly die because if you take any pride in killing him, he just regenerates and you become him. 
Yeah, it's kind of cheating. This guy sucks, but not as much as Slanesh. Slanesh is the chaos god of emotion, pleasure, and feeling. Which sounds pretty alright until you realize they're just gonna kill you or enslave you one way or another. The demons of Slanesh are a bunch of succubi that want to seduce and abuse you. No thank you. I'd much rather die instantly to Korn, or have my brain explode from the forbidden knowledge of Zinch. They are also hated by Korn for not killing things fast enough and torturing them. Now from the Legion, with my least favorite Chaos God, to my absolute favorite one. The Death Guard stink, but they stink so good. They carry the gifts of Nurgle with them wherever they go. They are green and spread the love of Nurgle, which just happens to be the unspeakable poxes with horrors beyond human comprehension. And the Primarch of the Death Guard was a man who only begrudgingly started to worship Nurgle to save his legion. That man was the Reaper, Mortarian. Mortarian grew up among plague and toxins on a planet that was still in the medieval times. He was raised as a child to a psychic who ruled over everyone else on his kingdom. Mortarian saw through the toxic BS of his planet and his family and tried to kill his father, and would have failed if it weren't for an unknown scam caller who was Nurgle who was about to corrupt Mortarian until the Emperor of Mankind came in and killed Mortarian's adoptive father. He swore to work under the Emperor, but always hated him due to his inability to exact vengeance. He quickly decided to turn traitor when Horus asked him to, being closer to Horus than most Primarchs. Nurgle, with the help of the current Chaos Lord of the Death Guard, then microwave Mortarian with disease and his sons until he gave in to chaos to stop the torment. Since then, Mortarian has tried to give humanity many plagues, including the Morbius in the Grey Knights game. But the true betrayer of the Death Guard is the Chaos Lord, the Herald of Nurgle, Typhus. Typhus is the bastard that infested the Death Guard with unknowable plagues. He became a reaper of souls for the plague god, using his scythe to create some cool plague zombies, and did many other things to spread the influence of Nurgle across the galaxy. Their god is Nurgle. Nurgle is the godfather of plagues, and shows love by infecting people and introducing him to their family, and is the god of familial love. He's hated by Zinch for constantly getting in the way of his future plans, while Nurgle just stays in the flow of life and death. The Death Guard are very slow on tabletop, and are methodical tanks that are unmovable objects, and honestly terrifying once they get on top of someone. They don't move as fast, but kill hard. Mortarian is disgusting on tabletop because he does the whole thing while still not moving slowly. Holy Terra, that was a lot to go through. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and look for more content on the channel about 40k and some other game content. I miss some of the Chaos Legions, and we'll cover them at a later date. Which is your favorite Chaos Legion in Primark? Make sure to tell me in the comments down below. I'm a big fan of the Death Guard and Nurgle myself for how much fun they have being big, wholesome, plague-spreading chunguses. Till next week, fellas.